today we have a very interesting panel discussion when we say that we require to have a different degrees when we give some kind of suggestion to the students as you all know everybody has a different concept of running their schools but when we see down what a student required even before they go ahead and then choose what kind of academic degree he wanted to pursue i think one of the crucial aspect what we require is that which from what background is coming what is the feedback that is been given by he or her parent so therefore when we see when we look down all these things one of the important crucial aspect which comes comes here is that the social and mental well being of the students i think it is a very very fundamental aspect which we require to focus before going to or acquiring any degree i think as long as a student has a stable mind and physical attitude i think he would have every potential to succeed anything to moderate this panel session we have our moderator for the day dr s narsimha reddy principal hps ramantapur so can we have a huge round of applause for sir then we have dr vasudha rani principal paniya madhavi vidyalay school can we hear a huge round of applause for madam and also we have ms sandhya venkatesh president for goa sahodya school complex can we hear a huge round of applause for madam and also we have ms shalini singh hamilton principal for ib myp dp cambridge cbs the gaudam school and also we have ms swarnalata principal for tashri jc both adilabad can we hear a huge round of applause for madam also then we have ms urmila chailuka national counselor for manodarpan and national ambassador for ict can we hear a huge round of applause for madam thank you so much madam please please come down madam i'll just see that there will be another change please please come down from heartfulness education trust Geeta, we do have our representative that is Dr. Pari Lavi Bokapati, right, ma'am? So, representing Heartfulness Education Trust. So, this is our panel, and we're gonna have some interesting insights which will be coming from their end. So, I'm looking forward. So, can we have a huge round of applause before they begin? And I also leave up to the moderator. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank uh, Indi Global. us this opportunity um, all of you are aware that uh, engineering stream and medical stream are uh, selected only through uh, a neat and je entrance exam during these days and these two exams have become very very important in children's mind and parents mind and then right from class 1 they start thinking about uh, iit or, or neat or whatever other engineering streams and um, needless to say the speed and accuracy are very important uh, skills to crack these exams and most of the times uh, the so called coaching centers always say that the coaching has to begin from um, ages 12 to 13 years that is 7th class to 8th uh, class and continue up to 12th class and some coaching centers also start this coaching from class 6 and today we can discuss how important it is or what kind of skill set is required uh, to crack these exams and the, today i would like to introduce uh, the panelists uh, of course the topic is preparing for jee neat and other entrance exams from class 7 to 8 need and role of counselors in this whole process and what is the parents perspective about these exams is the today's panel discussion topic Uh, let me take this opportunity to introduce our panelists uh, mrs vasudha just please raise your hand uh, vasudha principal pananiya uh, mahavidyalaya and she is also secretary of hyderabad sahodaya schools complex um, the next uh, sandhya venkatesh uh, she is a president of uh, goa sahodaya schools complex and um, mrs shalini singh principal gadiam school ma'am please raise your hand and also with us mrs swanlata principal uh, telangana state social welfare department uh, mrs um, uh, umarani national counselor manodarpan and um, she is also national ambassador for ict and uh, mrs sangeeta 
Oh, sorry, Mrs. Dr. Pari Plavi, um, Artfulness Education Trust. So they are the panelists with us today. So let me just uh, take this discussion forward, uh, asking um, question to uh, Mrs. Uh, Sandhya Venkatesh, I was president of Goa Sahodaya Schools Complex. And uh, uh, if you think about this craze or the interest towards uh, IIT especially uh, is more in South India uh, compared with North India. And uh, that, that's the right from, right from beginning, like, you know, whether you like or don't like, parents will start um, conditioning the minds of children right from age five, you have to become IITN or you have to become a doctor or something. So I would like to understand from uh, ma'am why this is only in South India. I don't know how it is in Goa, but it's very much there in Hyderabad. Let's take this forward, how this kind of thing is there. Sir, I would also like to introduce myself as principal of Mount Litra Z School, which is from K to 12. So this craze in Goa is recently developed. Goa is a very nice state, sir. There is no competition. It has started developing from the time the outsiders have started coming in. But I feel that the parents are putting their aspiration on children. They are not understanding what the child requires. And uh, IIT, when you speak about all these big institutions, it is a social status, which the parent wants to put it on the child. Because they think if they pass their IIT, if they are going for IIT, or if they are cracking JEE or NEET, they will make their life. And that is why this competition has started. And we all know that in South India, there is a lot of competition when it comes to cracking competitive examination. In North also it is there, you must have heard about Kota factory. It is a huge, huge factory which is running uh, classes all over India. They are capturing city after city. And when you speak about this competition, it is really taxing the children. I don't think it is required from 8th standard. It's really, really pathetic situation where parents are pushing their children for these competition. It has to start when it has to start. You cannot push them from the age of 13 and 14. They have to understand, is the child ready for this competition? Does the child want to do this? I am very happy that we have Manodarpan here and uh, thoughtfulness because more than uh, students and school, it is required for parents. They need to be educated. They are not, uh, they have not given birth to a child so that the child can uh, put his entire effort in taking care of them because it is a very difficult scenario. Uh, when you hear about suicide cases, when the child cannot take the stress, so very important that we educate the parent. These competitive examinations have to start from 11th onwards, not even up to 10th. The child has to understand. The child has to know what he wants. When we are talking about education, we had a very good session now in the morning about sports, about liberal uh, education. There is, uh, I met a person about liberal education yesterday from Flame University who was trying to educate children in descriptive writing. So we have put everything on the back seat and we are running a rat race. Whose child will crack JEE? Whose child will crack NEET? How many will come in the uh, merit list? Because merit list is required because if you are not in merit list, you have to shell out lakhs and lakhs of rupees. So it is very important to educate the parent. Sir, the world doesn't end if the child doesn't crack JEE and NEET. Absolutely, I agree, I agree ma'am. Well said, well said. Thank you sir. Of course, here uh, CBSE or ICSE, whatever whatever stream you take, uh, mainly schools focus on the regular curriculum, but definitely uh, the children who are appearing for these exams need to develop uh, some skill set to to crack these exams. And let me ask Mrs. Uh, Shalini Singh, uh, uh, what could be our role? Uh, how do we help the children? Uh, see, Ma'am said that we don't have to uh, start coaching right from class seven or eight. But you know, probably we can focus something from that age uh, apart from the regular curriculum. So how do you think like we can help the students and how do we unlock uh, potential of the children in this aspect? So to start with, I would support what ma'am said just now. To change the mindset of the students or the children, first we have to change the mindset of the parents, right? So to do that, we need constant counseling for the parents. As ma'am said, 
not getting into JE or NEET is not the end of the world. And now we are in the age where there will be 21st century careers where slowly and steadily these career options which are present now will be moving on to some different career options. So for we at the school, in my school of course, and I'm sure many other schools are doing that, we conduct general sessions, counseling sessions for the parents and for the students as well. Because if we have to change the mindset of the parents and the students, we need counseling sessions general sessions as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions. That is first thing that we all should start doing in, in our schools. Second thing is how to unlock the potential of our students. So giving way to their creativity, giving them the freedom to pursue what they love to do, whether it is sports or it is uh, creativity, because creativity is something which is the biggest natural resource. Right? So if we let them explore and experience and excel in what they do, that is the most important thing. Coming back to different curricula, as Sir mentioned, ICSC or CBSC or a state board or national curricula or the international ones, whether it is IB, MYP or DP or Cambridge, I think uh, with the introduction of NEP 2020, slowly the national curricula is going to be at par with the international curriculum, but yes, at present, like how we have in IBDP and Cambridge, there are different uh, subject groups, so students have to select one subject each from different subject groups, whether one is languages, second one is humanity, or the sciences, or the math, or the creative, technical, and vocational groups. So when they have one subject from each of these groups, five or six groups, the holistic development happens in the academics. Along with the academic rigor, we of course have to let them participate in all the events to develop their global leadership skills, to uh, make them feel more confident, to uh, develop their communication skills, so that we unlock, we help them unlock their potential. Of late, even Telangana government also started uh, some kind of uh, special schools wherein they are giving coaching for uh, these competitive exams. Uh, nowadays, you know, they're also equally competing with other students uh, uh, who are coming from rural areas and then don't have opportunities to learn, but they're also getting into the stream. I would like to understand, uh, and uh, please uh, uh, tell us, ma'am, Ms. Swanlatha, who is the principal of uh, uh, Telangana State Residential uh, Schools, um, how are you able to develop the strategies? Because most of these are first-generation learners uh, whose parents are not uh, into education. They're all from villages, but still they are uh, getting uh, seats into IIT and uh, uh, even NEET also. Could you tell us like, what kind of different strategies you adopt to train these students? Sure, sir. Thank you. And I would like to thank uh, my uh, head office officials for uh, giving me wonderful opportunity to participate in uh, this Indie Global Education Festival. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, answer this question, sir. Uh, entirely, our Telangana social welfare residential children are different from other uh, schools' children because you know all the reasons. But we have different strategy, basing on their uh, uh, la uh, Telugu medium background, uh, as well as rural area, as well as their parents. Because uh, the students, uh, even the parents also don't know about uh, uh, IIT, JE, NEET, uh, because they're not, they are not well aware of all these things. So that's why we have a strategy from eight, uh, we have uh, 34 uh, institutions all over, uh, 268 uh, Telangana social welfare residential institutions. Only these 34 uh, schools focus only on uh, uh, IIT, JE, NEET. So these uh, institutions are known as uh, center of excellence institutions in our uh, uh, Telangana society, residential uh, social welfare society. So uh, we will take care of the students uh, from 8th to 10th uh, on foundation course because uh, these are all uh, from Telugu medium background and we have to create uh, the main task uh, um, for the students is to create awareness and motivation uh, for appearing for this uh, uh, national examinations because uh, uh, they are not unaware of all these things. So we start a foundation course uh, at uh, 8th, uh, uh, 9th and 10th and later on uh, in intermediate level 
uh, we start coaching the students uh, from 6 a.m. morning to 10 uh, p.m. And uh, the main task for the principal and the student, uh, teachers are, is uh, to uh, bring back the students into English medium because most of the children are from Telugu medium and uh, they study uh, in uh, local government schools and remote areas. That's why uh, it's a big task for the principal and the faculty. Uh, and then uh, um, they conduct back-to-basics uh, uh, classes in the night studies. Uh, and every subject senior faculty conduct uh, one hour for teaching the topics and one hour for practice. And later, they provide uh, um, study material to all the students. And uh, they'll conduct uh, uh, weekend examinations. And after that, we review every weekend, of, we review the examination and uh, we discuss with the students and we'll conduct re-examinations on unattempted questions and wrongly answered questions so that the student is able to uh, rectify the mistakes. And next, uh, uh, we concentrate on the student who are uh, um, unable to uh, cope up with other students. So future slow learners, or we say, we call it as future achievers. So we help them because they are uh, reside in our residential uh, institutions. We encourage them to uh, give personal care. And uh, we also conduct uh, seminar uh, sessions uh, every day from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. because in these uh, sessions, uh, seminars, one uh, subject lecturer guide the four students to prepare and present the seminars so that every student cover and uh, Telugu mediums, mainly Telugu medium students, they improve their uh, language skills uh, and they understand the medium of instruction in English. So, and uh, uh, su subject faculty also prepare questions uh, uh, from NCRT syllabus because uh, the students are not aware how the questions are asked because mo most of the questions are asked on uh, application method and an analytical method. So we concentrate on uh, the question papers. So what are the keywords and how the questions are asked and the keywords which are in the previous questions are explained to the students. More practice are given uh, to the students on the question paper pattern. And Thank then, you, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, more or less you, you're also following the same strategies, whatever uh, uh, most of the educational uh, institutions or these coaching centers are doing. Uh, can we finish the session? Then you can ask because, uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, please, you know, write it down and then you, you can, you will be given opportunity. Um, and your, um, I would like to mention something to you. Uh, one of my relatives uh, studies in uh, one uh, coaching center. I don't want to mention the name, which is a corporate school. Um, what they do is, uh, which is atrocious, I feel, uh, they, they do away with social studies, English, Telugu, and all other subjects. They don't teach anything except uh, math and science. So trying to develop your aptitude and so many other. English also is very important. But these children are grilled. I mean, they're just uh, grilling and drilling is done only in these uh, two subjects to crack the exam. Don't you think we need to uh, help them to develop some social skills and uh, you know all other uh, skill set that is required for life? What is your opinion in this uh, case, Mrs. Sumarani, who is a national counselor uh, from Manav Darpan? Thank you for Indie Global for giving me this opportunity and uh, being with all of you here. Please asked because IIT, JE, NEET and all are the only thing whenever we are uh, discussing even if in a working place, even when the child is crawling, just the child is crawling and everybody is uh, telling that uh, this fellow, he is catching a book of uh, some uh, uh, Annaprasana we will do, no? So that time onwards, parents will think of whenever the child is touching the book, then they will decide themselves that he will become IIT, <laughs> IITN some, someday. So it is not the fault of the child there. It is the mindset of ourselves. So as a counsellor, I have seen uh, many issues re uh, during the um, pandemic situation. Uh, Government of India has uh, appointed tele counsellors uh, for the ment social mental well well-being of the students, not only for the students, for teachers and all the stakeholders of the society. I mean the parents also. 
So when we discussed, when we have, we, we used to get calls round the clock at 60 to 70 per day. Suddenly uh, we had a call from a class 5 child stating that my mother is not allowing me to play uh, with my younger sister who is in class 2 even in this uh, pandemic situation when the schools are closed. And the parent is very much interested uh, to send her, the boy uh, to see the, her, her child as IITN. So this is a pathetic situation when compared to other states, Telugu states are very much uh, like uh, interested their child to be either uh, admitted into IIT or in NEET or something else. When we are coming to uh, see, look at education is, all, is for all learned development. So we are missing the element of teaching them to be empathy and uh, look at the uh, other fellow beings and be friendly with the uh, 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 classmates. These are all they are missing in their regular life. And uh, when we teach about, uh, when we see the scenario of IIT and JE, they will took away the 12 to 16 or sometimes 18 hours of the student's life, which is very much uh, to be enriched with all kinds of exposure to the children. So now after NEP 2020, we are talking about uh, integration of technology in education, integrate of art in art integrated learning and uh, all down, for all down development we are introducing scouts and guides we are introducing ncc everything should be introduced into the uh, early uh, ages of the child be then only they will become the uh, holistic uh, uh, student for the next generation future generation so simply getting a number, good number or marks or uh, getting an IIT seat is not, uh, it is not end of the life as uh, Madam told us now. Absolutely. I would, like to, I would like to share one anecdote with you. Uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, uh, uh, once he became the president of, uh, uh, CEO of uh, Microsoft, and he was addressing all the gathering and uh, he told one thing, uh, my, my legs were shaking while coming on this stage because this is the first time to come on the stage. So all of us shocked, like, you know, how come a CEO of Microsoft comes to a stage for first time? And then everybody was uh, surprised and then waiting for his further explanation. And he said, this stage, because when I was in the school, I was no one, like, you know, I, no one, no, I was, not a favorite of any, any teacher. I was not recognized by any teacher. And uh, I didn't have any good uh, skills uh, to, to showcase myself as a great person. I was unknown. And uh, I competed for IIT, but I couldn't crack IIT. And then he did his engineering from Manipal, and then he became CEO. Now, under me, thousands of IITians are working. So what he says is, don't uh, label someone, don't uh, IIT is the most important thing in the life. Without IIT, you cannot even survive that kind of things. Please do not tell the students. And anyone can become a leader. You appreciate and then inculcate, you know, habits of learning on their own are important skills. I think uh, neglected, uh, which are not given due importance uh, in school education, in some schools. I'm not, I'm not mentioning that every school, but these are not given due importance, which are to be and with which actually students develop a lot of other skills like you know they can the social skills or i can say 21st century skills or life skills which are required how do you uh, suggest or how do you how do you advise the schools uh, uh, you know mrs uh, uh, dr pari uh, she is from heartfulness uh, so i think you know yoga meditation and all those are also required while preparing for this kind of exams how do you advise all the schools to, to compensate this kind of skills which are to be developed in the children when they are preparing for this uh, uh, IIT and then a uh, NEET. Over. To the organizers of this mega event. Uh, so coming to the bane of today's civilization, I am speaking as a doctor. I've been working in adolescent health and education uh, for the past many years. And it hurts to see our children, you know, suffering with all the ailments. Where, that have been listed out. 
So as uh, earlier someone had said, you know, well-being is multidimensional, physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and there's also a financial and a professional component to that. What we have been doing is we are a left-brained civilization, giving so much of importance to all reason, logic, all the aspects of our left brain. Our entire civilization over the past 200 to 300 years has been left-brained, and it has led to all the current ills in society. What we urgently need to do is to bring balance. We need to bring balance not just between the left features of the right brain, integrate them, and also get the heart, you know, the head in alignment with the heart, because that is the core of a person's being. When the head and the heart are in alignment, in tune with each other, the body also automatically comes in alignment. And then, the, uh, you know, the potential within the child, a child is a, a hidden treasure. So the Heartfulness Educational Trust has a, a you know, very vast menu of offerings for, uh, you know, this situation. So most of you would have been familiar with the SA event, the All India SA event. In fact, it's a global SA event, which is being conducted over, you know, maybe 15 years and more all over the country and abroad. And we have programs very specifically tailored for different age groups, classes one to nine in a spiral learning fashion, 10 to 12 in a different fashion. So these integrate the various needs, you know, the psycho, uh, the motor development, the sensory development, the psychological development, along with developing the knowledge, the particular attitudes that a child needs to develop, the universal human values directed towards the human, uh, you know, the universal human values, and uh, the various skills at all levels. So these are very well integrated by professionals from a global level, and they have been offered. In fact, we have been offering them. We have MOUs with different governmental departments, with the social welfare department, with the Department of uh, Technical Education. And the proof, there has been, uh, they have conducted studies, they have been assessed, and it's all evidence-based, and we're taking it forward with a lot of statistical, uh, uh, you know, uh, corroboration proof of that. So. What we need to aim is for the holistic well-being of the child, and it has to be graded. And the most important thing the child needs is to be recognized as an individual in the, its own right, and not as an avenue for the unfulfilled wishes and desires and ambitions of its parents. Most of the times, a uh, parent says, I want... And also, I would like to start another uh, anecdote uh, before I ask question. You know, some of my students, like, you know, uh, whom I taught, they were just average, like, you know, 70%, and they couldn't crack into IIT or uh, whatever so-called uh, very prestigious exams. And they were students, uh, always used to get 96, 97%, and those parents, like four students used to be there, and I'm talking about 97, and they used to fight for one mark, half mark, parents themselves used to come to the teachers and then, negotiate for off mark, you know, he did right, and why don't you give off mark like that? And, you know, after uh, 10 years, we came to know that, you know, the so-called uh, the, the aggressive competitors in the class, uh, and, you know, one student was there who always used to enjoy his life and involving in all kinds of activities, and he became CEO of a company, and four of these who were competing for off mark, you know, they were, they were working with him. I, I, I was shocked to know that. So here what I would like to say is, it's not only one particular skill set has to be developed, so we have to focus on so many other things. And um, so I would like to ask uh, the next question to uh, Mrs. Vasuda. What kind of skill set do you think is required for uh, students to crack uh, this IIT JE or NEET? A beautiful brainstorming session since yesterday. I would like to quote, I don't know who has given this quote, but the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. So unless and until we prepare our students with future skills, skill development programs, no soft skills are being involved in your teaching learning process. If you are not integrating this with 
your studies, then you are not preparing your students for future. They are not future ready students. Before I answer your question, uh, I would like to share one of the experience with my parent. I don't call him my parent, but a parent which happened to me a few days ago at the time of NEET exam. NEET exam which happened very recently. Uh, my school was a center for NEET exam. A parent after two days of the NEET exam comes to me and blames the center that the failure of the child is because of the center. Out of 800 students, out of 800 students, I don't know how I am responsible that, for that particular one girl's failure in the NEET exam. He says, because my center has not given or not ready, he has given so many reasons for his daughter's failure. So how a center is responsible? See the madness of parents. They directly blame centers, teachers, everybody for their child's failure. They don't accept that the child has not prepared well or he or she has not helped her child to prepare well for the examinations. That is the madness which we can see, I think, mostly in the southern states. Because if your daughter or son is not cracked neat or je, that means you are a failure as a parent. They take it as their failures. So that is the situation which is happening. So to answer your question, sir, how you are going to help your child to prepare these examinations, give them the free hand to study, don't stress them, then that is the main thing, maybe I feel a student can crack in any kind of examination. Okay, the next question. Uh, this craze, uh, you know, for IIT and JE um, is more in South compared to North. Uh, but apparently even uh, people from North also are doing very well. So why do you think this much craze is there for uh, this IIT, JE and uh, NEET? So what is reason you think that why we are always after this IIT? If IIT is not there, if, if someone couldn't crack IIT, you are waste or uh, you're not fit to be in any other place. Why do you think so? IIT, JE, no, I'm but I'm not about a the, failure. I, no, no, I'm asking about the parents' feeling. Parents' actually. feeling, sir, parents, uh, today's parents, I call them helicopter parents. They want Absolutely. everything for the child. So they don't understand the child's ability, rightly put by her, that the girl failed in a need and she was blamed. So how is she responsible? All of us know that we are not responsible. The child's ability to crack any exam has to be understood first. And whether we talk about so South, North, East or West, the child's ability is important. Everywhere you cannot have human factory preparing people for IIT, NEET and JEE. So what are we going to do with so many engineers and so many doctors who are not capable? Nowadays, though, I'm scared the children who have completed their engineering and medical in pandemic, should we go on those bridges? Should we go to those doctors? So to be very frank, sir, it is we educators have to change the mindset. Parents have to be trained as rightly put by um, someone over here that they come uh, by Shalini ma'am that they are counseling parents. So we as schools have to take it ahead, counsel parents. Everybody cannot be engineer and everybody cannot be doctor. My father also wanted me to be a doctor. I see blood, I faint. Good he did not force me. So it is up to the child's ability. So we have to educate people and the entire um, uh, credit is with the teachers. It is our ownership that we train people. We have to educate parents. If my child doesn't become a doctor, he can become something great, right? The rightly put by you that one child became CEO and the four toppers were working with him, under him. So my child can become something great. So I, as a parent, I'm very proud. I did not force my daughter. When she cracked past her 10 standard with 84%, I brought three forms, kept it on the table. Uh, humanities, commerce, and science. I told her, pick whatever you want. 
and I have a daughter who picked up humanities and she was so happy, she came home dancing. My, 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 my name was first in the merit list. Humanities mein beta koi nahi jata hai. So your name will be in the merit list. <laughs> but today she has worked with foreign universities. I'm very happy she has made her life. I did not force her. So we have to advise parents. As a teacher, we have to stand up, sir, for our kids. Because they are the parents at home, we are parents in school. We know the abilities of every child. So we have to stand up for them. We should not go with the craze. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Any edutech companies are coming out with a lot of digital content, tests, analysis, and they're aggressively advertising that they must, I mean, students must take, uh, you know, these tests to become IITN or whatever. Especially this has increased, uh, you know, post-pandemic. What do you think? Like, you know, is it really required or what kind of preparations do you think are uh, sufficient for, uh, you know, them to become doctors or engineers? Thank you for the, your question, sir. So first of all, I do not at all agree about, you know, producing and churning out our students like machines from morning till night, different thinking skills. They will excel in life, irrespective to any curriculum. <coughs> whether it is international or national. So first thing that we all should focus is that our students should develop all types of various skills which are required to live a successful life. Secondly, coming to these agencies which have cropped up suddenly because the pandemic, the, it, it, is, uh, it was an advantage as well as disadvantage now because the virtual medium has given a lot of opportunities for us to present our different uh, the content and other, other digital things which are, you, are being uh, propagated and advertised strongly that this is the most useful content for our students to crack any competition. The thing is, if we talk about the CBSC, it is well aligned with NCRT. And all these competitive exams, whether it is JE or NEED, they're all aligned with NCRT. So if the syllabus is taught well, the concepts are taught well by the teachers and the students are focused and they're passionate about writing that exam so that they can pursue their dream later. I don't think these digital contents and other supporting uh, contents are required. So there will be uh, agencies who will be trying to promote those things. But we as teachers, don't we really know that we, without that also now, before the pandemic, or before pandemic also, there were some uh, coaching school, uh, schools, like Sir has mentioned, and other esteemed panelists have mentioned. They are like match boxes, some of them, where students just go and like horses, when they have the blinds like this, only looking at one thing. They are only focusing on those particular subjects for clearing, the, uh, clearing some particular exam. That should not be the way. It should be holistic development, holistic excellence of the students to develop skills which will help them become global leaders later. So I totally do not agree to uh, the content being supplied by these agencies. Thank you, Thank you so much. This uh, social welfare residential schools have a different setup and uh, located in remote areas. And uh, during these days, they're also doing very well. And uh, what kind of problems do you face handling uh, such type of coaching issues like you know do you really coach them right from seventh as you were mentioning previously or um, you start after 10th class uh, how would you how it would be briefly please immediately we start uh, uh, regular courses for iit and je need coaching and uh, we have uh, um, many problems uh, faced uh, during as our institutions are located at remote areas because uh, we never get uh, um, experienced and uh, uh, faculty and uh, we have no internet uh, connection uh, connectivity problem and we have so many institutions are located in the remote area we have the infrastructural problems also and uh, students uh, uh, they come from the rural areas and uh, the parents are also unaware of that they don't like to stay in the institutions because uh, they always uh, like to go home and uh, for even uh, festivals and holidays also, if they go home, they never come back because uh, during holidays also, they have to stay back uh, in, the holi in holidays. Uh, so it's very difficult uh, for, the, for us to 
keep the student uh, in the institution for holidays also. And uh, most of the students, they worry about uh, medium of instruction and uh, the uh, timetable also. Uh, they feel difficult uh, in the beginning months. So after uh, motivating uh, the parents and students, uh, the importance, because uh, uh, we are introducing these uh, children, marginalized children and uh, BPL children to the uh, new level because they don't know all the uh, value of this IIT NITA, but uh, the student, uh, teachers, uh, stu parents also don't know about that. So we want to bring them into that, such a big platform to the students to know about uh, the value of all the uh, things which are going in the national and international level. So motivating them and creating awareness among the students and uh, Parents is a very big task, sir. These are the some problems we are facing uh, in such remote areas. I think uh, we are getting late uh, because we started the session a little late. And this one last question. Um, nowadays, you know, many Olympiads are being conducted by different people. Actually, this is mushrooming. You know, whatever, whatever Olympiads you say, uh, they're collecting money and then conducting. And parents are also confused. Uh, you know, children are writing so many Olympiads. And how do you think uh, this particular, what, what is the standardization method uh, to, to tell them? And if parents, uh, they, they, they're not happy if, if the children get less marks, and they don't have any standardization practice in, in the questions. And do you advise parents uh, or schools to, to go for this kind of tests? Because uh, no one uh, certifies or um, you know, give any authentication to this kind of tests. And what is the... What is the importance of this? Is it really important or not? Anyone can answer this question. Yeah, because this kind of test definitely put pressure on students rather than parents. Students are not ready to answer or attempt these kind of tests which are not standardized and which are not being prepared by their own teachers. Because if a question paper is prepared by their own teachers, they know the standards of their students. So uh, in turn, students can attempt these questions and have gain confidence in them. But if the question papers are being prepared by some unknown people, like some agencies, which they mainly focus on money kind of thing, so I don't uh, advise these kind of standardized tests for my students. So this Telangana Tribal uh, Welfare uh, Madam, uh, Swarna Lata Ma'am. Yes, Ma'am. See, Ma'am, there are. I appreciate your initiative of bringing the children into national and international platform because that is the need of the hour. But the thing is the environment is not supporting them. That is what you mentioned in your talk. So that parents are not aware of yes. what's going on and the yes. child obviously does not know what is happening. Yes, yes. Therefore in many schools which are in cosmopolitan cities, it is okay for them to explore such values, such system. But when there are, when the government has given so many skill opportunities for these children, when the government, you are, you know better than us about the social welfare yes, schemes, yes. what they have. Yes, Why are you a sort of forcing children to go to the IIT and NEET and whatever the question? Because I'm out of the platform. I don't know what are all the things also in that. Okay. Yes. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, good question. Residential institutions. Only we are, uh, we started 34 institutions, center of excellence. So we are not forcing all the 265, eight institutions, only 34. So we are, we want to bring uh, the, our children to be in the platform of national and international level, ma'am. So, uh, other students are excelling in uh, uh, different subjects. Uh, only 34 uh, institutions only, center of excellence. Uh, for IIT, JE and NEET. Remaining all uh, uh, 230 institutions are uh, competing with other uh, uh, academics. Yes, ma'am. So we are not uh, compelling, forcing other students. My question is, okay. were the, all the students of that were studying in schools interested in JE and Yes, yes, ma'am. We will conduct. Analyze that they are interested in that. Yes, ma'am. We conduct a, a screening test who are interested. Uh, who are interested and who are uh, uh, excellent in that uh, subjects and will conduct. Uh, the question paper is in both Telugu and English medium, ma'am. Ma ma so I, think, I think it's a time to wrap I it know. up. And then ma one more question, oh, please. One last question. I don't get to meet uh, government officials or people who are doing such kind of work. So 
So what? that's the reason I've posed this question to you. Ma'am? We don't get to meet. The so one last ah, question. Well okay, ma'am. Okay. okay. Uh, one last uh, question, Are you please. satisfied, ma'am? Are you satisfied with my answer? Okay, okay. I don't know what is the subject like you, know, no. you don't Olympiad, agree. Olympiad, Olympiad. Oh, Olympiads, okay. Olympiads because many prestigious universities, the children who uh, score top rankers of Olympiad examinations, they conduct separate entrance examination for these kids and give admission including IIT, Triple IIT Hyderabad. Not only Olympiad examinations but also KVPY examination which is conducted yes. for class 11 children. And for these children, again, they'll have a, short, a small examination kind of thing with interview and they'll give admission to this uh, selected Olympian, uh, Olympiad selected children as well as KVPY selected children. So, uh, Olympiad examinations are good for the kids because they also develop inquisitiveness in the children. But let us not force if the parents are willing. And if the students are willing, then they can appear for the Olympiad examinations. See, well, you know, the standardizing these tests, the mushrooming, and they're making money because, you know, just for, from each student, they're collecting 500, 1,000. I am not supporting Olympiad Foundation, any Olympiad Foundation, but there is a provision for okay. this. Yes, that was a really, indeed, a engaging a session. Uh, we are here to share our opinions, ideas and put forth our perspectives. At the end of the day, we are here to object to bring something tell you friends I, I will be listening to some of you yesterday this morning also you all are very passionate people very passionate and this enthusiasm should go on I was so happy to see the last uh, almost two and a half minutes the vibrant people that is fantastic your vibration is the key right my my only request to you is Let's stop the blame game. Let's blame ourselves. The day we start blaming ourselves, I believe we would be a great successful nation. And that is one lesson I would give you from my learning from my school till today. Let's be the learners like time. And I'm very, very certain we all would succeed together. Not in isolation. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful time and wishing you all the best, please. Thank you. Message will start up. Sir, we will give our first momentos and come this side, please.